Sorry about that. I want you to take your Bibles today and turn to Exodus chapter 35. Exodus chapter 35. You know, there's a lot to be learned from the children of Israel as as they prepared to build the tabernacle. I've been reading up on that. and uh, In this chapter, in chapter 35 here, we find that uh, Moses had called the people together. Now keep in mind, this is not far right after... Uh, up on the, the Ten Commandments and, and God delivering through Moses the law. You can go back a chapter or so and, and read about that. But in this chapter we find Moses had called the people together. And what's so interesting, even though God just gave the law and had that mountaintop experience to the point where when Moses spoke, you remember, his face was aglow, and, and eventually he had to put a veil on it. You ever noticed you, you can recognize somebody been with the Lord? You ever noticed that? I have. The kind of people I want to be around. So Moses brought the people together, and he delivered the commands of the Lord, and they were pretty tough. I began to read through them, and i tell you, the first thought went through my mind is I'm grateful for grace. Amen. Man, not to... I mean, you couldn't even eat on the Sabbath. What would I do? <laughs> Work six days and do nothing but worship and rest on the Sabbath. But looking through the law, it said if, if anyone was even found kindling the fire it would bring death that's pretty intense don't you think I'm grateful for grace the commands were given Moses gave the commands and then Moses sent the people away because even then even under the law even though God gave these specific laws even then God wanted people that was committed to him God wanted people God wanted those people just like he wants us today but he wanted those to be willing God never intended for us to be puppets he gave us a free will and, and even then, even the Israelites here, even through these circumstances, God wanted those that were willing. So the Bible says in Exodus chapter 35 verse 21 that they who are willing, they, who, they whose heart was stirred, they who offered themselves and what they had, they brought. Now you can you can read before and after uh, and, and and find a lot of interesting things. Those that could do carpentry, those that did I mean there's just so many things listed in there. God has enabled every single one of us here this morning to do something. There's not a one of us that could ever have the excuse to say, well, the Lord really didn't give me anything because that's just not true, isn't it? Is it? I mean, it's just not true. Let me ask you that again. That's just not true, is it? No one has that excuse. Now, when I look at this scripture and I read it in verse 21, and they came, everyone whose heart stirred him up, and everyone whom his spirit made willing. And they brought the Lord's offering. Whose offering? The Lord's offering. To the work of the tabernacle of the congregation. And for all his service. And for the holy garments even. Get into that in just a minute. 
We are living in a day when the church needs to be gaining ground, but the fact of the matter is the church is losing ground. There's more churches closing every day than there are churches being started. And so we're losing ground. There's less people going to church today than there were in times past. So we're living in a day when we're probably losing ground, but that is not God's will. God does not desire that we lose ground. Now the results is up to God. We're never responsible for the results. What we are responsible for is to do what God tells us to do. Keep it in mind that God has gifted every single one of us to do something. Now look around. Look around. While there's people that can tell you things about stuff, while we even have people that can tell you things about stuff they don't know nothing about. <laughs> Just kidding. JK, LOL, smiley face, whatever. But, I mean, look at the talent. Building things. Working with wires that are electrified. That don't, that don't go with me very well. Plumbing, plumbing, textiles, furniture. I'm, I'm just looking around at all the, all the different jobs, mean bosses. Oh, Patsy ain't here. Debbie, sa settle down, Debbie. Look around. There's so much talent here, and God desires us to use it. The church is only as strong as the members because the members are the church. Right? So that's what we're talking about this morning. I, I want to look in this passage of Scripture. I want to look at these because these folks were involved in worship. This is what they were doing, worshiping. We may work. We may have, listen, we can worship all the time. Everything we do can be part of our worship. So I want to look at these folks that were worshiping, and I want to mention four things about these worshipers, and I want us to apply that, uh, or we can certainly apply that to our lives. The first thing I want to mention today is this, and that's the assembly of the worshipers. Let's look at that. The Bible says there in verse 21, and they came. Now, now, get the picture in your mind here. All these people, these, I mean, there were a lot of them, okay? And so here they are. They're gathered. And Moses says, those, go home. And those who are willing, those who your hearts are stirred, those who your spirit makes you willing, come back with what you have. What if we done that today? What if we said right now, listen, everybody, get in your car Go home. As a family, as an individual, go home. And bring back to God's house what you have, what you are, what you do. Those that, uh, uh, and, and, and I'll tell you, you'll, you'll forgive me, my, my mind's a lot on my buddy Thurman. But I would think about the crosses up here. Go back and bring back what you do and give it to the Lord. What if we done that? What if we physically done that? What would you bring back? That's a good question, isn't it? Some of you ladies can cook. Well, some of you men can cook pretty good. Now, I'll just I would just trust that the Lord would put that on somebody's heart <laughs> when you come back, right? I that was a question that I kept asking myself all this week and I wanted to to really highlight that if we were asked to do exactly what these folks would do what would we bring back well we can bring back our satellite TV we've got that where we watch TV all the time we can uh, you just I'm not even going to go through all that you just think about it there's a lot of things I guess suspect we don't want to bring back but think about your life what do you have to offer what can you bring back to church you think about that in your mind. 
Now there should not be anyone to say, well, I couldn't bring anything back. Because sometimes, some of y'all just bring yourself back. And that'd be all right. Because the way God uses you, just being yourself. I'm looking at the assembly of workers. The Bible says, and they came, everyone whose heart stirred him up, and everyone whom his spirit made willing. And they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation and for all his service and for the holy garments. The people came together and what they did is they fulfilled a need. That's exactly. They were building the tabernacle of God and in that tabernacle there were needs. Things needed to be built. Things needed to be clean. Things needed to be fine-tuned. There had to be a, uh, uh, the altar. There had to be the Holy of Holies. There had to be the veil. Somebody had to make the veil. You know, we don't have time to go through all the tabernacle, but think about all the different things. You think about our church today. Look what it takes. Now, we can put up a tent and have church. Amen? I mean, you know, uh, you've seen churches burn down or, or get blown away, and, and they'd have church in a fellowship hall, or they have church outside. We can have church anywhere. But think about what it takes on a weekly basis for this church to function. I mentioned this morning about maybe one of these next 10, 15, 30 years, we might buy a new coffee pot over there. We're getting close. It, it, it was funny, though, because somebody fixes the coffee for people. I don't know about y'all. You folks don't drink coffee. Don't I guess you don't care much. But I, for one, I'm grateful that I can come in and drink a cup of coffee. I like it, but I like the fellowship better. Think about what it takes. Somebody's got a plan. Larry mentioned that people are stepping up. He mentioned the deacons. Yeah, Kevin's stepping up as far as he can. We, are, I, I am so happy with our our de, our new deacons. They're such a blessing. They're bringing such a heart and a passion. I'm going to tell you what, our deacons visit. And I, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for our deacons. But I'm thankful for our teachers. I'm thankful for, thankful for a lot of people. The fact of the matter is, the people came together to fulfill the need at hand. That's what they needed at the moment. What's our need? The fact of the matter is, they were faithful to God's work. Now, we live in a time... And I'm as guilty as anybody else. We are Christians when it's convenient. I think we're Christians all the time, but we serve the Lord when it's convenient a lot of the times. Sometimes our careers, our hobbies, our personal interests have consumed us so much that there's very little time and effort and energy left over for God. Well, what does God say about leftovers? He don't like them. In fact, he tells us that he wants our first fruits. God wants your best energy. He wants your best gift. He wants your best Sunday school lesson. He wants your best sermon, your best song. God deserves the best that we're able to give. He wants our best day. And so we have to remind ourselves, and sometimes we have to remind each other, that even though we don't feel good today, even though we don't feel like doing anything, because He lives, I can do anything and everything. And whatever He needs me to do today, He will give me the strength and the energy and the wisdom to do it. Even when I think I can't, God says I can. Many are happy to attend church as long as it doesn't interfere with their personal life. Well, this is, this is the problem, folks. Church in our state, in our county, in our country are declining every week. Now, they're increasing in a lot of places in this world. The gospel is alive and on fire. But in many of our churches, it's dying. It's dying. And doors are closing. That's sad. I don't think God's pleased with that, do you? Just something to think about. Here's what the Lord laid on my heart. We need a revival. Yes, indeed we do. But we need a revival 
of faithfulness. That's what the Lord has impressed upon my heart for my life. And as a pastor, He has done it over and over and over and numerous times to say that we need a revival of faithfulness. That it is time for you and I as a church to become more faithful, more faithful than we've ever been in our entire lives. Because right now, God needs us to do. Now sure, God can do it without us, but in His blessed plan, He chooses to use us. God could make that piano play by itself, couldn't He? If He wanted to. I mean, He's God. He can do anything He wants to do. I mean, God could let me sing. He's chosen not to, but according to God and Edith, I can't sing. So, a couple more weeks, it'll be okay. I'll forget it in a couple weeks. I'm just kidding. But think about it. Because he does it, Peggy gets to play the piano. Edith plays the organ. Isaac plays the piano. There's other people in here that plays the piano. Some of us can play the radio. Think about it. A revival of faithfulness. Hebrews 10.25, you know that scripture. Not forsaken the assembly of ourselves. Not forsaken the assembly of ourselves like some do. Well, folks, let me tell you something. With all the love in my heart, I'm saying we've got too many people forsaking the assembly. Now, there's plenty of good reasons not to come to church. I mean, you know, if you've got the flu, stay at home. <laughs> if, uh, you know, if you, if you break your leg or <laughs> in a terrible accident and you can't make it, we understand. There's all kind of reasons, okay? But the sad part of it is, oh, man, I had a tough week. That's not one of them. <laughs> I don't feel good. That's not one of them. I'm tired. Ooh, I want to go do that. Think about it. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another. And that's why. Because you know what? The fact of the matter is, when we get here on Sunday or Wednesday, by the way, I don't know, some of y'all may not have known we got church on Wednesday night. I don't know if you knew that or not, but... <laughs> Uh, but, but when we come together, here's what I need. I need to see you. I need to laugh with you. I need to fellowship with you. I need that. I don't know about y'all, but I need that. Do you need that? And if I don't have it, I miss it. And I think there's a lot of people like that. So, the Lord Jesus Christ set up the institution of the church. This is His church. And we come together, we come together, and that's what they did. The assembly of the worshipers, they come together, and you and I need to come together, come together, and force and be the body of Christ that God would have us to be. I believe together we can make a huge difference. I believe, and I'm not one who puts things forward, I don't want to plan any ideas, in anybody's head, but there are some areas of our church that needs help. I love our church. I think we've got such a great fellowship, such a free spirit. As they say, the preaching's fair. But there's some things that's missing in our church. And right here, right now, I'm not going to mention any of them. You think about that. You think about it. There's something special about gathering with God's people. Something very special. You can get at church what you can't get anywhere else. You can't get it at the ball game or the hunt club or the gym or well, this place or that place. You, there's, pl there's things that you can get here that you can't get anywhere else. And there's things that we need here. 
There's a lot of things we do that you can get in other places, but when you put it together, you can get here what you can't get other places. So they came, and then they did something else. They brought. So I'm asking you this morning. I'm asking you to keep coming, but I'm asking you, what are you bringing? What are you bringing? Do you remember that question? What are you bringing to the Lord's house? So the assembly of the worshipers. The second thing I want to mention is the attitude of worshipers. The Bible says their hearts were stirred and their spirits was willing. They had a genuine love for God and had a devotion to His service. You and I need that. They had a compelling desire to serve the Lord. Above else, above everything that I can do, my desire ought to be to serve God. There's a lot of things that I love to do. But beyond anything that I do, I need a desire to serve God. And I need a desire to serve Him, not only here, but elsewhere. Wherever, I'm go- wherever I go. All of us need to have the attitude that these folks had. Because they left and they went home and then they come back. Those that are willing. Now the Bible doesn't say that anybody stayed at home, but there could have been. I suspect if if the folks back then were anything like they are today, a couple folks might have went home and said, Did you hear him? Did you hear Moses? I don't know who he thinks he is. (laughs) Think he up on the mountaintop talking with God or something, I reckon. I suspect there might have been a couple (laughs) that said that. That's as far as I'm going with that. The attitude of the worshipers. Another question for you. What do you come to church for? We need today, men and women of God, to have their hearts stirred by the Holy Spirit. We need our hearts stirred. We've become comfortable. And I like being comfortable but we have become so comfortable. God has a vision for our church and He's getting ready to let us know what it is. I believe that with all my heart. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God. Some of you have a gift that God has given you and you're not using it for Him. I would encourage you to use it. That was their attitude. See, we need, a, we need a, a stirring of the Holy Spirit. You might ask, well, where, where do we need this stirring? I, 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 boy, I could think of a thousand places. But I get to begin, begin to think about uh, uh, our desires. That needs to be stirred so that we desire the right thing. Our, uh, our conversation needs to be stirred. Our debate needs to be stirred because too many people are debating on things that don't matter. And they can't ever get to the things that do matter. Isn't it sad when you think about... I mean, church, I want you to think about something. Think about a church splitting, a church shutting down because of the color of the carpet. I mean, shouldn't the deacons, shouldn't the preacher, shouldn't the elders... Shouldn't they just go in there and pull all the carpet up and say, there, happy? (laughs) Now let's get back to the Lord's work. I mean, stop and think about all the petty stuff that we hear about. It's terrible. Things uh, Things that divide us. I can't fellowship with them. I can't work with them because of this, that, and other. It better be because of theological things that matter. When somebody says, yeah, I like that Jesus feller, but there's other ways to get to heaven, then I can't have no fellowship with them. I can't work with them. How could I work with them? But as long as Jesus is the only way to heaven and and the Holy Bible is God's holy word, I can work with anybody. Anybody. Different denominations. I love that about our church. The assembly of the worshipers, the attitude of the worshipers, but then thirdly, the ambition of the worshipers. Notice what they did. They they provided for all of the Lord's work. There was a need and they brought things back for the need. You know how I know? Because the tabernacle was built. 
That's how I know. That's how I know that a, that a church is doing what God ought to have it to, do, have it to do when they're doing His work, when it gets done, when the work gets done. The ambition. The Bible says that they brought the Lord's offering. Mm, I need to take this to church. Oh, I kind of like it. I'd like to keep this at home with me. No, oh, God says, no, I want you to take that ability. I want you to take that money. I want you to take that gift. I want you to take that praise, whatever the case might be. I want you to take it and take it to church. But we say, no, God, I kind of like having it right here. It's the Lord's offering. What belongs to God, we better give to God. Amen? But the Bible says they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation and for all His service, even for the holy garments. We know that in the tabernacle, the Levitical priest had to be dressed a certain way. There were certain standards. Had to have a black suit, got to wear a tie. Somebody needs to buy me a new tie. I'm just kidding. If I say that, somebody will buy me a new tie. I got, I got so many ties, I don't know what to do with them all. Most of them I don't even like. But some of them I do. The ambition of the workers. Every need was met. Every need was met. We need somebody to teach this Sunday school class. There's a need. We need somebody to fill these pews. We need somebody to sing that special song. Boy, if I just had somebody that would stand up on Sunday morning and sing a song about not being scared to go and be with Jesus. And then Larry shows up. If we have a need, God has equipped us to fulfill that need. And there is no reason why there ought to be any need not being met here in our church. Because look at us. The ambition of the worshipers. The work of the Lord deserves our very best. When our hearts are stirred, our hearts are changed. And when that happens, our ambitions change. Now all of a sudden what was important is not as important as it used to be. Now what God wants is more important. Let me say, I know, and several have already said it this morning, I thought it interesting, but, but we have some very committed people doing God's work. I mean, I look at all the things being done, especially during the week. I mentioned this just the other day, but those come in. Look, I can wave, I can, I can wave at myself. There's a monitor back there. I don't know if you know that or not because somebody's looking at me like, huh? Somebody had to make that electricity run through there and put that cable through there. There's so much. But I believe that every one of those people that have stepped up would, would be in agreement with me. We need more. We need more. Here's the thing in mind. Fulfilling the Lord's work should be the most important thing in our lives. These folks went home. They were willing. Their hearts were stirred. Their spirit made them willing. And they come back to give God what God asked for and what God desired. I'm hesitant to say what God needed, but in that sense of working, God does need it, realizing that God doesn't need us, for He is the Creator. The Creator does not need the creation, but the Creator asks of the creation, do what I ask. We need folks with an ambition. And the final thing, look at this, the abundance of the worshipers. Look in verse 29, same chapter. The children of Israel brought a willing offering. Keep that in mind. A willing offering unto the Lord, every man and woman, whose heart made them willing to bring for all manner of work which the Lord had commanded to be made by the hand of Moses. That's verse 29 of, of chapter 35. Now take your Bible and turn over to chapter 36. Uh, if that point wasn't made clear enough in chapter 36, beginning with verse 5, the Bible says, And they spake unto Moses, saying, The people bring much more 
than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded to make. Verse 6, And Moses gave the commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout. Let me skip to verse 7. What was it to be proclaimed? Verse 7, For the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it, and even too much. So stop and think about that. Think about the fact on a Saturday, on a work day, I get up, I, I, I say, Hello, this is Pastor Wade. I don't know about y'all, but I love to hear, hey, this is Eva from Warrenville Baptist. <laughs> I'm like, now I know who it is. <laughs> but I say, this is Pastor Wade. We don't need anything else today. If you're en route to the church to bring something, we don't even have a place to put it. We've got so much stuff right now. Take it back home and hold on to it for a little while. This is Pastor Wade. We don't need anybody else to come today. We've got more people than we can work here. I, 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 do you know what that would be like? I don't know. I'm not sure. The abundance of the worshipers. More. More. That's amazing when I think about it. That's what happened there. With everyone working together, they brought more than was needed. And God blessed their efforts. Wouldn't it be great for that to happen? You might be here today and say, well, I don't have much to give. I beg to differ. You've got a whole lot to give. A whole lot to give. Luke chapter 6, verse 38, and I'll be closing with this. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, with it shall be measured to you again. I'm blessed. Anybody else here blessed? Gosh, I've been giving so much. I better give. Because we'll receive as we give. Everyone should desire to bring something to benefit the Lord's house every time we walk through those doors. Even, now stay with me, church, even during the business meeting. Woo! -hoo -hoo. Did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. I was just thinking it. I'm kidding. But you know what? It's true, though. I was joking, but it is true. Every time we come to God's house, we need to bring something to God. Maybe it's our praise. Maybe it's ourselves. Maybe it's, it's a need, but we need to do it. Luke chapter 12, verse 48 says, For unto whomsoever much is given... Of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, of him will they ask the more. We've been given so much. And God has so richly blessed us. My prayer is this. That we will accept the responsibility of serving the Lord. We are blessed. We've been given much. There's much required out of us, Sister Geraldine. There's a whole lot required. There's a lot required of us because we've been given a lot. It's amazing. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Lord, we pray during this moment that, that we just stop and we remove everything from our mind. And we just stop and think about how blessed we are. And Lord, when I do, I know that I've got to give more. I know that I have to stay longer. I know that I have to go farther. I know you require more. Because you say it in your word. You've given me much and you're going to require more and more from me and I believe God that you have blessed this church so mightily and God I now believe that you're going to require more from us and Lord as the pastor as a member of this body you've not told me so I don't even know what all that means but I do know this that in due time 
you will tell me and you will tell the deacons and you will tell the leaders and you will tell the members and you will tell each and every one of us what you require of us. Lord, we love you today. And we just want to spend a little bit of time in this time of invitation to say, God, I want to give more to you. I want to do exactly what you want me to do. As Peggy begins to play, we're just going to go into a time here and you can just remain seated.